self-publishing podcast. Really should have had Lexi Maxwell on this one. Number 69. <laughs> Welcome to the self-publishing podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three guys who smell like teen spirit, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey everyone and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, a podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant and my co-hosts are David Wright and Sean Platt, uh, and smelling like teen spirit. 69, I didn't even realize it until I got there, and then, and then I giggled like a, like a little, like a fifth grade <laughs> boy, and I thought, wow, that's, I get to be immature for a living in a, in a weird way. Yeah, we totally, totally should have had Lexi on for today. <laughs> yeah, because uh, according to the one caller, she doesn't do anything, and we let her talk too much. Yeah, Cl well. clearly we don't plan out our show. <laughs> no, no, we don't. I li I like today's topic though. It's one of my favorite topics, so that's that'll be fun. How we get so much shit done. I'll, it's not one of Dave's favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though, Dave's 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 been kicking a lot of ass lately, so. Um, I'm yeah. glad you uh, think so, because this week I got like nothing done. My son was home all week. <laughs> yeah, but Dave. I'm, I'm, in, um, yeah, but you in, did. In our, you handled. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I got editing done. I just didn't get writing done. Yeah. In but, our story yeah. meeting yesterday, Sean said something. He said, "Dave has been so," um, and I said, uh, "Like I was waiting for the hammer on that. Like he's been so cunty or something." <laughs> And he goes, he goes. I've never called so, Dave like, Cunty. Ever. No, he hasn't. But I was, you know, like he complains about you on the show. I thought it'd be one of those things. So he said, um, I, it was like cheerful. I mean, it was an adjective you don't expect to follow Dave as being. Like, I think I said or buoyant. optimistic or on board. Might have been buoyant, but buoyant is I think another. I, said, I think I said kick ass. Buoyant? No, Are you calling me a blimp? <laughs> yeah, yes, I was. I, was. I think I he said, said sexy, and then he did one of these where he like licked his finger. <laughs> David Zeppelin Wright. Um, <laughs> I like uh, that. I, I would like... Um, no, it, Dave spent a lot of time this week going through edits, and I think this is a, a, a pretty quick thing we should brush on. Um, in, in the comments for last week's, um, last week's uh, episode, there was some question about the amount of editing that was suggested. And I agree with those commenters. I think it is overdone. I think what Stacy was suggesting is too much. And I also think that there is something to be said for a strong voice and a weaker edit. And that may sound kind of weird to say, but I, I think it's what, what Johnny always is harping on, um, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, because his voice is really strong, and an editor who doesn't really get that would probably change too much of his stuff. And we're having, I, I don't know, David, on a scale of, I just called you David instead of Dave. Jimmy J is rubbing off on me. <laughs> I gotta get these Can you pop. please call me Davey? <laughs> hey, Davey. Remember when oh, I made up a character that. called Wavy Davey? <laughs> and you would let me do it? I tried to forget. Yeah. Um, uh um, edits. Editing. Oh, uh, yeah. How comfortable are you talking about this week's edit? Not, I mean, not much at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I have a, a, I have a complaint. Then, if you don't want to go into that, well, I, I'd, I'd like to brush it at, at very least. And if I say too much, just shut me up, Dave. But um, we're dealing with our our edits for um, Z twenty one thirty five, and um, and it's it's. It's been an interesting experience because we don't agree with, I don't know if Dave likes the word a lot, but I'm going to say a lot <laughs> of the edits. And it's really interesting because these are, um, these are traditional editors. And um, I think that they trust our readers less than we do. And um, I think we know our readers better than they do. And I think that's kind of a big deal because publishers... It's like you're 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 putting you really need the right editor, and with traditional publishing, they are assigning that person to you, or at least for us, it's basically a, you know an assignment. And I I think that there's um, that's a big wall between the work and the the end user, the reader. And um, I don't know, I've I've Dave and I've had some interesting um, conversations on this, and we have a story meeting after this. I'm sure we'll talk about it more, but it's just kind of interesting. To to something. to be fair, to be fair, the edit the edit. Tours comments were suggestions 
all of which we could explain why we disagree with them. So they weren't saying it's this, you know, this way or the highway. They they were just suggesting changes. And and I think I think perhaps the editor didn't understand the exact scope of the assignment, which is why they made some of the suggestions they did. So I believe this will be handled, though. I've had discussions, and I've made sure I was clear in the comments, and I don't fault the editor at all because I think they were doing you know, a specific job that they thought they were supposed to do. So that's why I don't want to harp on it too much because it's not like you know somebody's pissing me off. They're doing yeah, what no, they thought I they should. Yeah, no, I don't want to harp on it at all, and I'm not angry about it, but I think it's pretty interesting. I think that um, I would say you know, our, our editor that we're working with now, Jason, um, is it Whited? Is that... Whited, yes. So Jason Whited is our editor, and I think he's doing a great job, and he's doing a better, better job all the time. And um, and it's because he knows us. And I think there's such value with that, like really knowing your editor and knowing what they want. And I don't think Jason knows exactly what we want yet, but I think he knows a lot more than a few months ago. And there's, you know, that relationship, I think, is, is really awesome. Yes. I'd be interested in... Um... Because you're right, knowing you seems huge, and there are things, at least with Sean and I, that he doesn't read because we don't go through our normal process, and I do that final polish, uh, insert comment where somebody says I shouldn't do that here. But um, I almost feel like Jason should read those so he understands our full body of work. Like he, well, Unicorn Western and the Beam, he's not reading. That's, that's interesting that you, you say that because um, I, I was just going over um, his edits on Green's and Everybody Gets Divorced, and Space Shuttle, but the second two for each. Now, he hasn't read any of those pilots, all right? So I actually... He did the Greens pilot, didn't he? <clears throat> did he? How would he not have done those edits? They, they didn't get an edit then, because I didn't see him again. No, they went, <laughs> through, no, they went through Garrett, because we, no, we were so oh. pushed. Yeah, we were so pushed on time on those ones. They he did read. Greens then, because you, taught, you made me wait, because I wanted to read it again. And you said oh, okay. Jason hasn't sent okay. him back yet. Okay, so, so that's great. So we have, so he did the first greens and he did, um, he did all the greens and then two and two. And I want to send the other two back just so there's consistency. By the way, he loves, loves, loves the sitcoms um, as much as anything we've done. Like there's, I'll show you, I'll send you one of his with comments in it so you can see his LOL moments and stuff. Sean and I are so pissed off that we spent that whole episode talking about the, 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 the space shuttle pilot and how, me, you know, that wasn't our best. So because, let's do it again. <laughs> because ever, because the other eight are are so much better. Yeah, you're right, Dave. We better not get off on that. But can I? Can I? Oh, sorry. Uh, Trish McCallan uh, McCallan says hi. Ran into the exact same thing when I got into the developmental edits back from Forge and Fire from Montlake when I sold my romantic thriller to them. So. Yeah, you. you I, I just. Because that is one of the conventional things that people say. If you go, one of the reasons to go with traditional publishing is the editing. But I'm just suggesting that that's not a given. You know, that, that's all. Um, like most things in indie publishing, there really are no givens. Um, which we could talk about the Joe Nobody thing a little bit too. I thought that was, I just listened to that an hour ago. Um, but uh, I, what was I saying just a moment ago? I don't know. The, the whole thing with, with Stacey, though, that I think the edits that she was suggesting for the average indie author is way overkill. I think you need a lot of beta readers. I think you need a lot of proofreaders. But um, it, it, a lot of that advice wasn't reasonable for the average indie author who's trying to get their first book out there. That doesn't mean you should scrimp on edits at all. But I also seem- think that that, um, and this isn't a knock on, on anything, but I, I think that that also sounds like uh, the same the same thing is like when people obsess over their their they create one book, and then they obsess on making that book perfect and getting the perfect perfect cover, and they spend a thousand dollars on a cover, and then they have a grand marketing plan where they're gonna you know do all these the splatter it everywhere and all that stuff, and um, sometimes that can work, but it, with one book by itself, it's just super hard, and it in our opinion it always makes more sense to go ahead and write the next book. And so in the way that I would approach that, this is just speaking for me, is I would put less, I would make that first book good, but I would put less in it and spend the remainder of the time generating more content rather than polishing that one thing and thinking that's yeah. going to be your end-all be-all. One so of the smartest things thoughts. Dave and I have ever done is to not market Available Darkness. <laughs> and just go straight into Yesterday's Gone. That was a very, I'm so glad that we did that. Um, 
I mean, I was just writing about that the other day in, in the Writer Dad book and how, how we did that. And it was, a, it was a very fond memory to revisit because I just remember that time when we had this book and we were done with it. And we were like, okay, what's next? What are we going to do? Like, how are we going to get this everywhere? And we're like, man, even if we get it everywhere, <laughs> we got to split the money and we're going to be broke. <laughs> Let's just write another book. And I'm just so happy we did that. And if we hadn't done that, I mean, we wouldn't be doing this podcast because we were only promoting Yesterday's Gone in the funnel, which is why we did, you know, the your show, Johnny, and so, all of this started. So speaking of, of your writing, I, I since I opened this box and I have to close it, even though it seems less relevant, is I want to complain about white space because you fucking assholes. Like, there, there's... <laughs> It, we've all esta we've established that that book opens with a school shooting. I'm halfway through episode one, so I'm a quarter of the way through the written white space material. There have been three incidents of children in jeopardy. You mean season more than three one. total? See, I'm halfway through season one, so I'm through basically. I'm almost through three, not even totally through three seasons. And there's been three. I mean, it's like yeah, you haven't even. Got I can get why it's stuff. a trope yeah. now, like, right? Like so, I thought I was safe to read this. Apparently you not. You are. <laughs> no. <laughs> for Nevermore is your safest. And you haven't even got to the stuff yet because But I feel like for Nevermore is the stuff that you I mean I know you guys like it, but you don't it's like white space is your seminal work and so I yeah, feel we love like white I space. Yeah, but I, I feel like I wanna read it. Oh well, you there's... should. Grow some yeah. balls well, and read I, it. I am I haven't stopped. <laughs> I'm just pissed at you. I'm just saying I'm, I don't like reading about children in jeopardy. I thought I'd gotten through it. No, Dave's keywords for season two was floating children. <laughs> you know what it is is like. Um, it, do, do you ever hear how the Trans Transformers two movie is Michael Bay said bigger fucking robots? That was like the tagline for that movie. More fucking children in jeopardy was David Wright. Like that's that you should put it right on the cover. A bigger basement. <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't even think our white space is having that many children in jeopardy. But okay. Because well, it's really so, not about that. I, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if That's I can just do this. That's a, a seasoning. <laughs> but what does that? I'm gonna. Say? I, well, really, no, hold on. Hold on. Hold say? on. <laughs> Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this without spoilers. Okay. So we already know it opens with a school shooting. So several children, not just in Jeopardy, but beyond Jeopardy, say. Actually taken lead. Yeah. And then there's Carl Hauser's backstory. Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot about oh. that. <laughs> With the fake and then, wall. Ah, no, no, right, no, don't and then, ruin it. <laughs> and then, and then there's, and then there's what's going on with, with Emma. And I don't know how that's going to resolve yet. But there's the guy involved, and he's into all sorts of shenanigans, and his what, what they're finding in his place. <laughs> you know, you should get that yeah. the sexy voiceover guy for a trailer. Imagine a world where no child is safe. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> Um, there, 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 there was a story I posted on Twitter this week about a, a hacker that had hacked into somebody's uh, webcam slash video cam uh, child monitor, and they the parents walked into the room when the guy was telling a two year old that she was fucking sexy or something. It was oh, so a disturbing. Two -year -old? <laughs> oh my god! And and fortunately for the parents and the child, the the girl is like deaf, so she couldn't even hear the guy. So, oh, wow. but, 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 but I've always known that, that webcam slash monitors could easily be accessed. So I never got a video monitor for our room because I'm just figuring someone's out there going to do it. Man, that kid's going to, like, if, if she wasn't deaf, she'd be five years old. God thinks I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's good for your self-esteem. But, uh, but, yeah, there's I, lots of creeps out there. Wow. <laughs> Maybe you could, you could probably... You should write a story about that. Hey, could get a positive review from that that person who likes stories written by Sean Platt and whoever else he writes with. It's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite comment. We got a review that said, and it's by the way, it's a great review. Like I love the review, but it said something like, "I'm a big fan of Sean Platt and whoever else he writes with." <laughs> <laughs> Some of our reviews talk about just Sean and how great a job he did with things. I have an ego to fill here, people. <laughs> Goddamn. Yeah, I don't care. Um, oh. Topic? Yes. Um, well, we're we talking about. Man? Well, can I, can I, can I, can I share something first? Because this is, um, I think this is relevant to like story planning and process and stuff. Uh, I'm working on Fat Vampire Five this week, and this is the first thing I've written in forever. It seems like, on my own. So uh, I, I'm missing the, the 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 collaborative back and forth. 
I'm missing the idea that I'm going to send this off to somebody and I'm going to get a reaction. So basically I sent a story <laughs> to Sean uh, uh, earlier this week and then just was like texting him, like, H have you read this yet? Is it, you know... Oh my God, yeah, he, he texts, he's like, I haven't heard from you. I sent that a day ago. <laughs> I don't think I said any of that, but I do think I asked if you had read it. And did not even like in a demanding way, just like, hey, have you read that? If you would have heard the tone of voice, if I could do tone of voice via text. Hey, psst, psst. Oh, way. that's the future. In the beam. So, yes, in the beam. So anyway, um, I wrote beats for Fat Vampire 5. Like, I was deliberate about that. I wrote beats for, for 5 and 6. Uh, and I just wanted to report in on how that's going. It's um, very different from writing 4. Uh, but it's not the same process. Like, I, I'm finding the beats are... It, it's harder to stay tight to them. And I don't know if it's because the story is expanding beyond what normally happens when I follow your beats, Sean, or what. Um, but I keep having to adjust them, but it's fantastic. Like, I'm able to keep up a pretty good pace, although I do still go slower. So I'll be interested to pair, I'll be interested to pair, uh, compare my total time on, the, on this project to the total time on oh, a Roman yeah, Sands like project. yeah, like you get through edits and polishes and all that. Too. Right, edits, polishes. I, I recorded my time creating all the story planning and all that stuff. So total time on Fat Vampire 5, I want to see. And, you know, I do think that... Um, I do think that uh, if you, I think that's really cool that you're going to compare. Um, I think that's awesome. And I think any writer listening to this who does any volume of work, um, you know, if you're, if you're just, you know, if you're one of those writers where we've all been in that place where we're basically just trying to get our words in each day, we're not doing it professionally, we're juggling between that and something else, then, you know, tracking isn't as important. You're basically just the consistency is most important. But if you're really hitting a volume and you're making your living off of your words, then tracking how long your projects take is a, is a smart thing. Um, I mean, I, I totally do that. I know how long something over here takes me versus something over here because even if you're going to work on that stuff anyway, it's, it's good to know. I mean, because then you know how expensive a project is. If, if, you're, if you're a writer, then your time is, is is literally your money, and you would budget it the same as anything else. I mean, if you, you have a household budget, how much you're going to spend your dollars on, you should know how you're spending your time, too. Which $2,000 a month on to Diet to Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah, I believe that, actually. And adult diapers, so you could just, like, let it all go, right? <laughs> um, and that's re very relevant to today's um, today's topic, actually, the, the how we get so much shit done. It has allowed me to move much, much faster. I don't know if you guys remember, but in when I was writing 4, there was a thing where you busted my balls a little bit about, I was writing Fat Vampire 4, and I was saying how hard it was, and you were like, it, it came out that I had been working on it for like, you know, two weeks. And you're like, oh, so you're, wow, well, you know, when it took you two <laughs> weeks to write a book, or something like that. Um, but it felt it felt hard, and it, it, it just... It was like a lot of <laughs> a lot of dead time, and I had to put in extra extra days on it. Whereas this, I'm able to write not quite as fast as I do on when I'm writing Sean's beats yet. Although I just had a really really fast session before the podcast, so I don't know what's up with that. And I do find that my attitude toward the beats is different. It's almost like when they're your beats, I feel a different responsibility to them in a weird way. Whereas when they're my beats, it's sort of like making your own deadlines, although I treat my deadlines really rough. But a lot of times when you treat your, you make your own deadlines, you're like, oh, it's my deadline. You know, yeah. I don't really have to abide by that. No, it's the, I, I totally agree. I'm, I'm a lot more religious to Dave's beats than I am to my own. My own, I just it's need because to Because he know. beats you if you don't follow him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but sometimes that's harder, actually. Sometimes I think we end up... Um, and I think Dave and I are really starting... And I mean, part of my enthusiasm with Dave the other day was that I think that we're really learning to work together better and better and better and, and getting we had a really good experience writing the um, Baricio goes camping <laughs> this last week uh, which, which was a, which was really really fun um, I was I was kind of bummed a, a little bit bummed on Dave going into Friday because I I didn't want to write it in two days I like more time with it than that just to breathe um, and it didn't end up needing to be done that way because um, we're, we're actually giving it to our readers this coming week but um, but I thought it needed to be done by Tuesday, so I had to write it all on Saturday and Sunday, and it's 11,000 words, so I only had two days to do that on the weekend, which I, I write less on the weekend. 
and then one day to edit it and polish it. <laughs> and that's just so accelerated for an 11,000 piece of work. Really, I had three days. And But it was it was fun. And Baricio is like one of my favorite things to write. So it, like, wham. Like I didn't have to go to a real job like and work on the weekend. I had to write Baricio. So this is what I complain about. But um, but uh, uh, it was just a really good experience. I, I loved his beats. And I, I think I varied from them more than I normally do. Um, but I think it gave us a, a a pretty good product, and I was I'm always nervous when I'm sending something that large to Dave off cold, um, like oh I, I hope he's not going to spend a lot of time on this and come back and be like growl like oh, or you wrote an action scene like I told you no action scenes you know so um, but he he loved it and I really um, I enjoyed reading his comments back and I thought our back and forth on that was great and we got a great product in three days and I love that that's awesome. So let's get more general. Um, what what are all of your? Uh, you know, how, how do you plan it? Out? How do you plan out your day? Uh, I, I I bought a book recently. Uh, Dave, are you moving into the topic just so I can frame my head here? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. so you so did a the, great the, job on that. His voice was all the topic. The, the topic is um, how we get so much shit done. So can I let me read the um, let me read the what what what's prompt me on this because I think this really sets the tone. And there may be others of you who are sort of feeling this way. So this is a comment um, from a, a long time ago. I just uh, sort of saved it in my email because this was something that people have been asking about. It's um, it's from uh, David who has uh, busted our balls and supported us both numerous times. And this was back in um, uh, May 17th, so it's been a while. Okay, so... He says, "Damn, poor guy." <laughs> well, but but we've we've had a lot of guests and stuff. <laughs> Countries okay. have fallen in that time. I know. <laughs> so he says, he says, uh, uh, "This is a nuts and uh, it was from the anniversary show, and I think it was a reply to somebody else." He says, "This is a nuts and bolts topic. I'd like to hear the guys talk about. Seriously, if for a change, if only for a few minutes. From time, oh, this is where he busts our balls. From time to time, they start to discuss discuss the practical aspects, sp specifics of their work habits and methods." But within half a sentence, somebody cracks a joke and they wander off on an unrelated tangent, which ultimately circles back to talking about how much stuff they've done without talking specifics about their methods <laughs> or without providing <coughs> practical show. pointers to aspiring writers, the intended audience for this show, about how to juggle multiple projects while completing vast quantities of clean publication quality copy. Okay, so he continues, I mean three new publications per week from the three of them while building a backlog? I believe Sean says in the episode they expect to be publishing at least three pieces per week. Among the three of them, I think it's more than that, and to be up to six months ahead by the end of the year. And they do all this while writing, while editing, while re-editing their stuff, formatting it for publication across multiple platforms, designing covers, working their two-hour story calls in to each other, collaborating with other writers, Garrett, Lexi, and who knows how many others, and managing their email and marketing lists, Oh, and there are the podcasts, SBP, BOU, Johnny's podcast with Joel Runyon now, and Dave is podcasting with Garrett. And while they're at it, how about we pack up the truck and move across the country? I really want to know how they do it, how they crank out the words to begin with, how they find time for multiple edits and the manuscript formatting, shows a practical conversation, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so that, that's sort of the, the, the frustrated, uh, good-naturedly frustrated... Uh, yeah, no, that's a great, great yeah. comment. That's a great comment. Um, it, we and don't it's a sleep big, in massive yeah, amounts of cocaine. It's a really big topic. Um, you know, I I've spent a lot of money on meth, and <laughs> <laughs> your teeth look beautiful. Why does it well, always have meth beats? I'm tired of these meth beats, Sean. <laughs> I have never, nor would I ever, ever do meth. That that's the joke where I derail you because you started to get specific. Yeah. Um, I think this is a huge topic. I mean, I. I this could literally be its own 30 minute show every week where we're cuz cuz we are constantly refining this and i think that if we had this i mean we've had this show before this is kind of a repeated theme and we'll have this again and if you if you play all of the times we ever do this you know back to back to back you're going to hear some similar things and you're going to hear some different things and that's because it's always evolving there's core stuff that we do like planning um, that's always going to stay the same. There's there's stuff like making sure that we're thinking strategically rather than tactically. That's always going to stay the same. But as far as the real true specifics about um, you know how I'm handling my schedule, that, that really is different quarter to quarter. Um, I don't change every week or every month because that's really, really dumb and unproductive. 
but at the end of each quarter, I, I evaluate, I take what's working, I take what's not, and I try to improve everything. So I really do, I mean, I think the most important thing in planning uh, or getting a lot done and just being productive is, is proper planning, but second to that and very, very close behind is the ability to adapt quickly to your plans and to make new and better ones. Um, that doesn't mean <clears throat> that doesn't mean wiping the board or you know, shaking the edge of sketch and doing everything differently after you've already planned it, but it means, for example, and this is so, so, so not to beat up on Dave, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but. His, but yeah, well, it, because the biggest roadblocks I ever have in my schedule consistently are, are put there by Dave. And, you know, that there's no animus there. It just it is what it is because Dave I'm is an, an artist. An, yeah, Dave is an anti-planner. He just, he really is. And um, we'll have something on the board for one day or whatever. And, um, and, and if I don't have it on that day and, I, and I'm not able to adapt, it really, really screws me up. Um, so I, I have to have, basically Dave's the only one I work with, well now Garrett actually, <laughs> who I have like contingency blocks. Like if no, <laughs> if, if A, then B. <laughs> so, um, and I gotta say, like there's a lot of things I love working, um, I love about working with Johnny, but, but that, the fact that if we plan something, that's a pretty solid goal block of time. It makes a lot of other things really easy and manageable. So I think having, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the mic should go to somebody else for a second, but uh, I mean, I could talk on and on about, about Dave. <laughs> no, just about planning and all Dave, of this stuff. You, you, um, and I thought about this because you guys were on the the Kobo Life, Kobo Writing Life podcast, just the episode three, and uh, Mark asked you. By the way, Mark had this awesome like. Um, mustache. mustache. <laughs> he had like a husker do sort of a. You know, it's a badass mustache. stash. It was pretty sweet. So. Um, Anyway, or Motorhead. Uh, so he Lemmy. asked you. He, yeah, that's exactly that's what that's what I meant when I said who could do. He said Motorhead, Lemmy from Motorhead. So, but Mark asked you without the mustache uh, about productivity, and Dave I think answered first. So, and and I thought I was like Dave always busts on this topic. Like you're always like, oh, I don't do I, you know I didn't do anything right. But you do produce massive amounts of word content. So what are your what are the things that you do? Uh, pray. <laughs> Pray, my Lord and Savior. <laughs> you do not pray. Do you just you put in insane amounts of hours? So, like, yeah. maybe we're all getting the same amount done, but Sean and I feel productive because we're doing it in half the time that it would take you. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, Dave's mantra is work harder, not smarter. Always. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like, like the horse in Animal Farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I... I, I bought a, a book recently to try to... I, I, I'm always trying to, like, better a system. He uh, is, too. It's it's beautiful. He tries it's very so ironic. Hard. It's very <laughs> ironic. <laughs> he does. It's not... I don't want anybody to think that he doesn't put effort into it because he puts so much effort into it, which is what makes me weepy. I'm like, man, the guy's working so hard. Johnny's gone. He left. <laughs> He's done. I, I had to turn my fan on. I've had to do that. Uh, okay, the, 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 there's two things. Well, there's a lot of things going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> Just two? <laughs> uh, part part of it is I'm trying. I'm trying to move my schedule more towards day than night. Uh, I I I spent most of my life uh, as an insomniac, even in you know high school. I just I I stay up. I can't go to sleep. And then I had a job. Uh, for my 20s, I was working most of the time at a gas station overnight. Yeah, that job ruined you for good. <laughs> so Yeah, and that's where I also got fat drinking soda all damn night. Um, but I had, I've had day jobs since, and I've had jobs where I had to be up during the day, but I've... I somehow managed, but that was like, you know, before we had a child and a child that like would stay up all night. So there's all these just different things that throw me off my schedule every time I get back on. And it's very difficult to manage because when I'm tired, it takes longer to do everything. So I'm trying to put myself in a position where, you know, I have energy and I can be creative at the right time. And it, it, it's very difficult, but I do need to be in the right mood to to work productively. Otherwise, you know, I just hate everything I'm doing. Yeah, that's a really, really, really good point. Um, <clears throat> as 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 I um, replan each quarter, one of the things that I look at 
most is how effective I was at different times of the day because I think really, um, really productive people know themselves very well. They know their habits. Yeah, I totally they know their, agree. Yeah, they know their vices. Um, I know when I'm more likely to mess around. I know when I'm more likely to just get my crap done. Um, I know when I'm more likely to um, hear my children on the other side of the door and feel guilty. And um, and I don't like that. I don't like feeling guilty. <clears throat> so I, I try to really plan my time based around the realities of my world. Um, the biggest mistake I've made this year was before moving to Austin, I really stupidly thought, oh, I'll move a couple days after. I'll be <laughs> back to normal my schedule. Yeah, um, I I don't know. Like sometimes I'm just an idiot. And you that captured that time yet? Um, no, I'm still I'm still a little bit behind, but um, but but I'm okay with it. I'm getting the stuff. I the stuff that I'm behind on is like stupid admin stuff. I get behind on email, you know, like comments on the site, that kind of stuff. That's just stuff that has to be done, but I, I can't put in front of writing. Um, writing, editing, polishing, all of the the production. I can't put it in front of production, but um, but I'm also very happy with the um, amount of family time I've had this summer. I'm really happy with the the move and us getting acclimated to a new city, um, and I'm really looking forward to. Um, I didn't have a lot of those guilty feelings. I allowed myself to feel more guilty about getting behind in work than about getting behind in home. And I, I'm really proud of myself for that because I haven't done that as much as I should have in the last five years. And um, I was better about it this summer. And um, Haley starts school on Monday and Ethan the Monday after that. And I'm so excited. Like, I love them dearly. But um, Get out of the house! Yeah, yeah my, I wish I had that. We, we homeschool. Yeah, um, no, I, I'm like, and I'm all, I'm all plotted out. Um, and and I did do a rare thing where I normally don't adjust things, you know, in between quarters. But I've got a whole different schedule starting in two weeks um, because they're going to school, and that significantly changes things. So so Carl Sinclair asked this gem right here. Anyone else ready to protest that they're totally ignoring all of our live comments? We're not getting. Carl, them. nobody has said anything <laughs> worth calling out. Here, hold on. Let me <laughs> let me hold, hold on. Let me let me put this. My one comments in. haven't updated bit. in like. 10, 15 little, minutes. <laughs> okay, let's play this one. A little bit, Brad. I deleted it from my mind. Or what about this one? Comments <laughs> are hosed for me today. Or is Sean still talking? I'm playing in Google Docs. So that's why. <laughs> All right, so let me give it... <laughs> let, me give my, let me give my answer uh, um, on this. And um, yeah, so uh, of course, because when other people are talking, I'm just making notes waiting for my turn. That's the way I roll. <laughs> so it's like, why, can I just cut out the segments where it isn't me? Um, no, uh, I, I so I have a few here. So uh, Sean mentioned deadlines, and we've gotten a few people who have said, why, uh, you know, why are you so worried about your deadlines? Because they're your deadlines, and of course you can be flexible with them. Yeah, I can, but if I set a deadline, I'm going to hit that deadline. So I, I uh, said something to Sean, like he said, "Do you want some extra days on whatever?" And I said, "I," he said, "I said, bitch, I don't miss <laughs> deadlines." Sean said he wanted to have a shirt made, <laughs> and if you have that attitude, then you, then you do get it done. So I know that if you I end say, up shipping a lot more at the end of the year. That's just fact. I have on my calendar here. I want to have Fat Vampire five and six, the rough drafts bo of both, and that finishes the series done by the 28th of August, because on the 29th I'm going away for five days. And that's going to be tight. And it would be really, really easy to say, I just take more time for it. But no, that's the deadline, and I am going to seemingly arbitrarily honor that deadline because I get more stuff done. Now, I've learned what I can reasonably uh, predict. So Sean mentioned a plan. And I have right on my desk here, um, I'll show you this month's, um, so this is um, this is August. Well, hold on, that one's not fixed. Well, whatever. So, I, but I have, I have a, you know, okay. So that was that was a good segment. Should I do that again? <laughs> that was awesome. It's, Can you do that again? It's every single day. I have exactly what what I'm doing, and um, but this one is is kind of in flux. But I have those through the end of December, so I know what I'm going to be doing writing each and every day through the end of December, and it's it's tight. Cue Sean joke, where. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> where we had to squeeze things in and make things fit just so just so like a jigsaw puzzle and every time I move a day and move a deadline then it's it fucks up Sean's entire plan for like all the verticals that he's working on <laughs> and so I I'm going to hit those but now I know exactly how many properties I'm going to produce during the course of the year so I think that's important and I, um go ahead Dave well I I I, I agree with the deadline thing, and um, but I break them frequently. But I will, <laughs> I will say, I will say in my defense, uh, a we've never missed a deadline with Amazon, uh, but we give ourselves a little bit more time. Uh, I think every time we've broken deadlines for for our books, it's always worked out for the better. We've always found a better story to tell. Uh, and and I do think there there is there is a thing where if we're going too fast and rush it, it won't be our best work. And I know Sean and I might go back and forth on this, but I for my creative process anyway, uh, I need more time, and I should just build that into all of our things ahead of time. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Is you can pull back, and look, by the way, Carl uh, says that I just attacked him. It's not. I I love you, Carl. Bust your balls. So um. Anyway, so look, I'm watching the live comments. <laughs> pull back. You guys aren't just D David Wright, the writer. You're, you're Collective Inkwell. And Sean has accommodated the fact that we know that you're going to sometimes miss deadlines. Like, not again in an animus way, but like, it's just part of the flow. So it, it's kind of like the deadline, the, the larger picture deadline gets handled. The when missing right. deadlines are a problem is when it fucks everything up. But you right, don't and, time and, and Dave and I have already solved that problem this year, which is which is great. We we've gone off of the weekly thing, and so we're really at a position now where we just get to say, okay, what's next, and how long will this take us, and build that flex time in. So if we think a project will take a month, then we you know seven weeks out is our is our publishing date. And we have a breaking important comment that I have to put up here. Uh, Amanda Plagerman, this is the first time I'm watching rather than waiting for iTunes to drop. None of you look like I pictured. I what just want to ask, did what did she picture? Yeah, did picture? <laughs> Please make that your next comment. You didn't expect Ray Romano was actually on the show, right? <laughs> Do I sound fatter or thinner? Uh, this you, see, <laughs> you sound like a stick man. I, the know yourself thing that Sean said is really, really true. So, for instance, when I get back, I'm going away for Labor Day weekend. So, I, my first day back is September 4th. And I have a very light day planned. I didn't, I didn't add in my full complement. The other thing I know is when I write something like Unicorn Western, I tend to, instead, of, my budget is 7,500 words a day, but I tend to write, this is going to sound really arbitrary, 8333 a day. The reason is because that's <laughs> 25,000 words, which are the length of those books, in three days. So I've learned that I can do that, but I've also learned to down, I, I only plan for 7,500 because there are other projects where I don't go as fast, or there I'll inevitably miss a day, or I'll have a bad day. So I create a schedule that I can, you, and it takes me, that's four and a half hours of my day, is producing that content. So, I don't know, <clears throat> I, I, get, I get weirded out in these kinds of conversations the same way I used to when, you know, blogging, where, you know, it's like 10 ways to have better, like, work habits, and I feel yes. like, what works for me doesn't necessarily work. You know, it's like... It, 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 All right, it's let like, me come to your rescue here, Sean. Because rather than us doing 10 ways, let me give you a post that you guys can read, and that'll cover a lot of my specific things. Oh, uh, that's cool. Selfpublishingpodcast.com slash productivity. It's a link to a guest post that I wrote on Joel Runyon's blog called... How, Dave will probably like the title because he likes my titles. How to do so many diverse and awesome things that people will want to punch you in the face. <laughs> that's awesome. And it is um, like a 10 tips sort of a thing. Yeah, that, 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 that's cool. Um, I, I think knowing yourself is really, really, really important. Um, it's, and, and knowing who you're working with, too, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're collaborators. So, like, I actually I only care about missed deadlines when it affects other stuff. I understand that that's part of the relationship with Dave, and that's totally fine. So, like, most of our conflict comes not from a missed deadline, but it's from a... I'll say something like, dude, whenever this is due, there's no wrong answer. Like, tell me six months from now, I'll put it down. And he's like, no, we're going to make it this time. Because 
because he's he. I know you guys don't realize this, but he actually is optimistic about many things, including how much he can get delusional done in, is the in, word in a, in a specific times. So he'll say, "No, no, no, I, I won't miss that this time. We'll do it." And, and I also you know. said I'd stop eating ice cream. And... Right, right. And and see, as as stupidly optimistic as he is, I'm actually diseased with my optimism. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll, even though like we missed the last thirty one, I'm like, like the sure. The mystics and the skexies in the dark crystal. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm more like wow. Charlie Brown in the football. Yeah, there you go. Or no, Dave, because so. isn't that the constant disappointment? Just when you cue something up, they fuck you. They fuck I am you Charlie Brown. Brown. I am Charlie Brown. <laughs> so um, one thing I, I I don't know I don't know how much people want to know if, if it, a big a big change that's made a really big difference for me, um, especially after moving to Austin, um, it's helped me be consistent, um, even though I've had less time at the computer, and that's doing the same things each day. So um, even as as far, I mean, just in May when I was living in Ohio, I still did did a system where each day I would just take like the next thing in a queue, if this makes sense. So let's say I would spend one day, and I had a lot of beats I had to write, and so I would spend all day, you know, taking care of those and outlining, and then the next day would just be all writing, and maybe I'd put out fifteen thousand words in that day and just be exhausted and done with writing and not write again for a week. Same with editing, polishing, anything else. And I don't do that anymore. I, I, and the reason I like to do that before is because I would like to finish one thing um, before moving on to the next. So if I'm working on the Bricio story, I just want to be done with the Bricio and you know take it off and put it, you know, pass it off to Dave before I move on to something else. And I really hated having multiple things going on because I felt like I'd get more confused, I'd make more mistakes, I'd go slower. And after looking at the data, my my preconceptions are wrong. I actually get more done, and I'm able to compartmentalize. So each day I have allotted, I spend this amount of time writing, I spend this amount of time editing, polishing, whatever, and, and I just hit those. And if I'm, yeah, so it takes me longer to write something because, you know, I don't necessarily hammer it out in a, in a two-day period, except for Brazil. <laughs> but, um, but I'm consistent, so I've written, you know, I've written at least three thousand words every day um, for almost sixty days. I started with um, Z, um, and that was on June twenty-first, and I haven't missed a writing day ever. And I know it seems like I write a lot, uh, but I've actually never. Ha- this is the first time since I started writing five years ago that I've written more than thirty days in a row, and. Um, I have no intention of stopping. Like it feels really good. Like I like I love getting those writing words in every day. Same with editing and polishing. But the difference is that I used to have to complete something. So I would spend days not editing. I would spend days not polishing or not writing. And now I'm spending a little time each day doing each thing. And I find that I'm getting faster and better at those things. And I think it's the consistency. I really think it's just going to the gym every day. The, here's some. The, I want to do a comments update, and this time I'm not going to um, be a dick about it. So, um, all right. So the first one is uh, the first relevant one is this one. Oh, I'm sorry. The one saying I want Johnny's <laughs> apps isn't the one I wanted. The um, it was actually the, 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 the okay. So now I can't actually find it. Okay. So Carl, they asked, all what deleted. Do you, they all got struck through. I don't know what happened. I was oh, looking minor, at live comments, not. and they all got struck through, so I don't see anything Mine are not new. struck through, so I can wow. do this. Um, okay, so Carl asked, what do you use as your planner? Uh, it depends on what you mean by planner. Um, in terms of uh, my, some of my productivity tools are this. Now, hold on. Let me get rid of this question. How do I, how do, I do this? Uh, okay. Hit it again. So, Hit the eye so next to it again. This is a little cheap target. Uh, Can't uh, see you. Watcher. You can't see me? How can no. you not see me? No, the comments the on. Comments. So hit the eye oh. next to it again. What the hell? I did hit the eye next to it. Hold on. Hit the eye next to another. Okay. You're on. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, now no, I'm turning no. it off. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, it's off. Do you see me now? See, this no. is why we don't deal no. with comments. No. It, can you now see me gone. now? No. Nope. <laughs> can you see me now? Yes. Okay, Jesus Christ. Like, I can see myself. It, and it's such a stupid, like, it's just, it's a timer. Jesus Christ, you don't even need to see it. <laughs> so it's just a cheap timer, and what I do is uh, actually shows 19 minutes still on that because I went fast. Um, 
is I, I, I found, I've tried a couple of different ways. I've tried going by word count. Sean and I actually had this discussion. I've tried tracking uh, my quota by word count, and I've tried tracking it by time. And um, I found that time works better for me, but I have a word count I want to hit within that time. So I have currently have two blocks. And one is, uh, in the morning I write from 6 to 9 a.m., and what Sean was saying, doing the same thing over and over, I do that every day. Except, well, I do it every day, Monday through Friday. So, and I don't work weekends, if I can avoid it. And so that's always the same, 6 to 9 on weekdays, I get up at 5.45, so I'm able to sit down at 6 and start writing. And um, I try to get 5,000 words in that block. And then later in the afternoon, I have a block that's one and a half hours where I try to get 2,500 words. Now, I believe I'm always trying to adjust and improve. I'm realizing I'm not actually answering Carl's question. I'm going to go back to it in a minute. Is um, I've realized that that second block is really, really it's hard. It's not hard for me to get the words out, but I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to sit down. I'm like, I'm done. I'm tired. So what I'm going to start experimenting with, as I told Sean for a while, I wanted to cut my production back by a third in the new year once we got really going good. And um, what I'm going to do instead is cut it back by 20%. So rather than doing 7,500 words a day, I'm going to try and do 6,000, but I'm going to do them in one three-and-a-half-hour block. So I don't have the afternoon block. That's what I want to eliminate is that because I know I can be more productive in the morning. Um, tracking. Uh, I just keep a to-do list, honestly. I have the calendar pages, these printable calendar pages. Um, what else? Do you, I, I don't really use anything else. Um, Timer I, is a big one. Oh, I, and then that Office Time app. Yeah, I was just going to talk about that. Um, I, uh, I was using something called... Um, punch clock I think um, but Johnny punch turned me on in. To punch in uh, but Johnny turned me on to something way better that I like that I've actually started using as of August 1st I actually started using it instead of the Excel sheet or the, the number sheet that I was using for so long um, I really really like it it's called office time I don't Here's know a, like, here, I don't know if you can see months. this on my phone this is the yeah, I don't use, from it I don't use it on my phone I use it on okay. my actual desktop yeah uh, I um this is, uh, I mean, I, I was tracking everything. If, you, if, you, if you're on YouTube and you can see this, like there's reading for pleasure because I just wanted to track for a while literally everything I did during the course of a day, yeah. everything. So I tracked when I went to the gym. I tracked when I hung out with my kids. I tracked when I was just like doing miscellaneous home stuff. And um, I'm just going to track work stuff now. But being able to go back with this, it's called Office Time and it's an iPad, iPhone, and desktop version. And... Um, I can go back and say, not only how much time did I spend on Unicorn Genesis, but how much time did I spend editing Unicorn Genesis versus writing it? How much time did I spend total on editing all my projects? How much time did I spend writing all my projects? Um, and that really helps because I can watch and see... Like, if you don't measure, you can't manage it, is basically the idea. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I love, love this app. I've never had a... Um... It's like a ten Never. fucking dollar app too. Yeah, and it, it so so like like Johnny, you you can um, set as many categories as you want. We do it backwards. I think you do it. You you told me to do it backwards. I think when we started, and I I did it's just it the report circular. I do the um yeah whatever the top level is. Hold on, let's see. So the project is um what I'm doing. So I make the project like writing, editing, whatever, and then I make the category the book. So yeah. writing. Fat Vampire. And, and I wish, if there was a third tier, that would be fantastic because I, there should be a third tier that says Collective Inkwell, um, Guy Incognito, Realm and Sands, um, you know, Lexi when I'm helping her with something. Like, that would be very helpful to have that kind of um, categorization. But I have to do it in the notes, which I don't like because um, because it doesn't show up in notes. Yeah, it doesn't sh show up in reports. But but that's its only flaw. I really love it because um, I have it on my laptop, I have it on my desktop, and I've just gotten into the habit. When when Johnny first showed me this app, maybe two months ago, um, I was using it differently than I use it now. I was really just kind of um, tracking the same things I was tracking on the Excel sheet, which were um, editing, polishing, and writing. But now um, it's everything. I don't track time with my family because I don't want it to feel like there's... I was just doing that so I could get yeah, visibility no, no. into my day, but yeah, I've stopped. I, yeah, I totally get it. 
Um, I just track desktop work. So if I'm actually at the desktop. So right now I'm, I'm actually looking at, at this. I track um, uh, admin, which, you know, I'm, I'm finding how much time I spend on admin, which I hate. Um, admin beats. That'll be the next thing I'll say after we let Dave in because I feel like we've been ignoring him. Oh. <laughs> um, admin beats writing, email, outlining, podcast, polishing, post-production, reading, story meetings, and general planning. And so every time I sit down, I just start the, um, I just press the play button and there's a drop down menu. I say what I'm spending my time on and then I just collate the results and, and, and look for ways to improve. In all seriousness, Dave, does this sound overly anal to you? Would you be able to use any of this or no? Uh, yeah, look, yeah, like I said, I'm, tr I'm trying to develop my own system. There's a guy named David Saya, uh, David, oh, S-E-A-H dot com. Uh, he's got an awesome blog. Uh, he, he makes developmental uh, planning tools and such, and he, he's all about this, this very topic. Uh, he's not a writer, though, um, but you can apply any of his stuff to writing. Uh, some awesome stuff. Uh, I typically I I I don't keep track of things. I I am I kind of try to keep everything in my head, which is a big problem. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the worst thing. You I can I know I know it. it but it, but it comes from you know not having the right system in place for myself that I need to develop and find. Um, I don't do it. Like I'll just have like random bits here and there, so I, I'm trying to develop that perfect system that'll work for me. Until then, it is kind of messed up. Uh, Trish had a question for us, so serious question for you guys: How many hours can you work at a time before you lose focus? And what happens if you push past the point your brain goes all mushy? I can maybe gut out four hours, but I prefer I've I, I've fine tuned it that three in the morning is like perfect. Yeah, I'm 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 three. It's anything after three hours, and um, and I'm just not as happy. Um, even if I can do it, it's not as good. I spend the the worst thing you want to do is get into a situation where you're spending too much time to do something inferior, and that happens if you like. I found I used because I want to I want to edit for three hours every day. Like that's the minimum I'm going to edit in a day is is three hours. But um, and I used to do that as one three hour block. I never, ever, ever edit three hours in a block anymore. What I do Here's is a productivity just... tip. Do stuff that you're good at because three hours of editing each day would make me want to put a knife in my eye. <laughs> well, I divide Have it your now. partner do it. <laughs> it's 90 minutes and 90 minutes, and I get substantially more words done in that way, and I'm more confident with what I did. Um, so that's, that's a big difference. Um, as far as uh, apps, um, the, I, I, use, um, I use Things on Mac. Um, which it is, it is pricey. The thing, the thing people complain about the app most is that it's fifty bucks. But um, and no fucking calendar view. But I don't need a calendar view in it. And <laughs> I the, need to. I'm visual. I need to see. Like you mean I, like I, it would show you what you're doing during certain. It doesn't of time have any that. calendar option at all. That's yeah. what I wish this had. I want a visual indication of I spent this visually this much time mm -hmm. on this, and that's what I. Want. <laughs> but but things isn't for that. It's just a repository for. Shit a lot of people have asked for it to have that, so there's no reason it should. I, mean, I can go on an hour for I, this. Yeah, one. I agree, Maybe but that's, that's up your so butt. irrelevant to <laughs> anything. <laughs> So what things does and 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 yes, fifty dollars is a lot of money. However, no calendar. Yeah, but however, I bought this out three or four years ago when I had no money. But fifty dollars is nothing to something that helps you do so much more. And and back then I was doing a lot of ghostwriting gigs for very little money, and it helped me organize things. And so I think the opposite of of Dave's system is the worst in the world. I'm keeping it all in my head. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you can't keep shit in your head, and I don't care how smart you are. Like your your brain, because if you're keeping stuff here, then you're you're not. You only have so much RAM. You are a computer, so if you're using RAM to just kind of keep this stuff hovering, you can't. Use and RAM. and consider, I have OCD, so I have a whole forty percent of my brain partitioned yeah. to stupid shit that repeats in a constant yeah, loop. You're, you're like you're like that. You're like Safari. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I swell up to four gigabytes of RAM, and then you I really falter. Do. <laughs> yeah, you you can't do that. The things for me is um, it's like like I'm talking to 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 Johnny in a story meeting, and he says something that needs to be done. I'm like, okay, great, you know, control space bar. I enter that, and it goes in the inbox. And I know at some point I'm going to see that again, and I have to do that. I can also set recurring tasks. So my editing, polishing. Writing, like those are all recurring tasks every day. So as silly as it is, I check those off each day, and it's kind of a sense of completion. And okay, like you know, I, then I, I look in the morning and I can see what is waiting for me. And it's not like see, oh, now, I, I do that in my calendar. That's interesting. Yeah, but Dave, it, maybe that would work for you. Block out like this is the time when I write visually on the calendar. I like to look at mm -hmm. my calendar. What I've done for the this this next starting when the children are back. Um, uh, everything's in blocks, so I just have this master um, calendar where it's like editing block, writing block, whatever, and then there's flex blocks. So um, you know, if if something it's funny goes up, like this, <laughs> uh, I hate that you flexing, flex and sorry. actually have muscles, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. Um, so so those those are like mobile, right? So if um, let's say, for example, you know, uh, Mark from Kobo wants to to interview us. I try to get it into one of those mobile blocks that I could just drag that over, and then it doesn't really affect anything. I just don't schedule anything else in that in that place. Where a long time ago, when I wasn't as organized at trying to um, get a lot into my day, and it was just like, I, when I was working um, harder rather than smarter. Um, I would just not get like I would I would take that and I would just fit it in as soon as I possibly could and then not write that day and that's you can't do that. So I want to make two two quick points here. So um, uh, trying to f here it is. Okay, so no, that isn't it. I can't find. Oh, here it is. Amanda asked. Um, uh, I wonder if they schedule their time so tightly they have to pencil in taking a dump. Like <laughs> clearly that's kind of a joke question, but I just want to oh, make no. the distinction. That, <laughs> No, no. We, I want to make the distinction that we want... I, Sean and I are talking about wanting to know what we do with our time, which is different from scheduling. Now, I do schedule those writing blocks, but I want to know what I'm doing with my time. It's not about schedule... I don't say, oh, okay, I'm going to go play with my kids for an hour. I just want to know that that's what I did. So that's the difference. And then the, the big tip I want to give, this is like Johnny's number one productivity tip, which Johnny should take the advice and talk about himself in the third person. Is um, I I try very very hard and I'm I'm currently on the wagon but I'm off it a lot to check email once a day and that is hard as fuck for people like us uh -huh. who are used to being online. Uh, if you don't believe it's hard, try it. Yeah, I, I couldn't. So yeah, hard. I couldn't agree with that tip more. Um, I know it seems like I do a lot. I'd do a lot more if it wasn't always an email. Like it's the worst. And I have it filtered. It's about block time. It's yeah. about it's the Pomodoro thing. Yeah, it it's absolutely true. Um, and, and no, I don't I don't I don't schedule when I'm taking a dump at all. I just know what I have to do each day. It's it's time blocks. I'm not actually that tightly scheduled. Um, my blocks are 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 certainly there though. Um, but again, I, I have room for I have room for flex. I will say, however, and this may seem anal to people, but if we're talking about this stuff, if I do have to take a dump, <laughs> I actually go to my um, and press pause on whatever task that is because I don't want dump time to be included How in editing time. How long are your dumps? <laughs> Wait, no, it's not that. They're <laughs> quick. They're quick. I don't they worry out, about it. I'm like, it's only no, going to take a minute. No, no, but that's not the point. They come out in an S. Like I'm Dr. Oz approved. Like I don't <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but but um, I'm not like yeah, Dave. This has been the self-publishing podcast. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. But um, no, it's because I'll get distracted. So I like I go, and then I come out, and then Cindy asks me a question, and then we get to talking, and then I come back, and it's like there's been 41 minutes, and I you know I don't know when I so I just I know if I'm leaving the desk, I want my time accurate. That's all. I want reports accurate. Uh, Nicholas Collar suggested something to us. It's called Rescue Time, rescuetime.com. I've looked that up, and I'm trying to remember what it was, and I thought it looked good, and I didn't do it for some reason. Is it, I think it tracks Cost. what you do uh, with your... Spot inefficiencies in your day. Become better at self-managing your time. Make measurable changes that impact your time in a positive way. Dave, how do you feel about having something that's running on your computer and tracking everything you do? Does that sound okay? <laughs> 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 like the like the government isn't already doing that, says Dave. 
yeah, I, I just I just try to do it manually, but I, I like the idea. Yeah, I'd I, rather do it manually too. I I don't want that because I just know that I'll see like I spent three hours looking at Gmail and I'll feel very defeated by oh, that. Yeah, it's Gmail. <laughs> I I would rather. <laughs> Okay, I meant egotastic.com. Uh, <laughs> but it, then I'll feel like, oh, shit, I wasted that time. I'd rather delude myself into thinking that I was actually... Oh, delusion. ...than I was. That, but that's, that's the <laughs> idea, Dave. That's actually, that's Sean's it, number one productivity tick. Delude yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I beat myself up enough. I don't want to hate myself even. Yeah, you are well, I suppose it depends on your type of personality, but I, I am... I want to constantly do things better. It's just it's just how I'm wired. So if I see that I'm spending a way more time on email than I thought, I, I'm going to try to figure out ways to, to fix that. And by having a block, you blitz through it faster, and you don't have that little distraction, ooh, like squirrel, you know, I'm going to go off and check egotastic.com for celebrity nips, nip slips or something. <laughs> <laughs> not, you know. And, uh, not that, I've never heard of that things. website, by the way. But um, <laughs> It's my home page. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, seriously, the, the productivity difference in email, because the world gets quiet. It, it's weird. It's like, oh, I don't, like, even if you don't, by the way, if you have reminders set on your email, and Sean, you said something the other day that you talked about emails pinging in. What the fuck, man? Turn that off. Like, you <laughs> don't have your, your phone telling you when you have new emails. What are you, Pavlovian dog? Oh, hold on. I got to go check this shit. No, no, it's on. It's it, that was that was Lori calling in. It's only that one email address that it's like an emergency email. Ah, uh, that's it. Uh, but if you do have that reminder set where it lets you know every time you have an email, oh, for the love of God, if you want to get something done, turn that off because you're trying yeah, to do it, something. Oh. It is the worst. I I turn off I turn off email um whenever I'm going into writing, and then I I do have one automated type of thing um uh, that's like the what what was the what what, what did Nicholas say what was it called? Rescue what? time. Rescue time. Yeah. Um. I, I have one tool like that. It's like that Adventure I Time. Uh, <laughs> I have one tool like that that I use called um uh, SaneBox, and it's four ninety five a month, and it it all my emails go there first, and then it's basically trained, um, so that I actually handle email in two separate blocks. I handle it um with basically it it it's a priority system for sure. Um, which I'm sure could be manually done, but I've never been very good at prioritizing my email like that. Um, and this, you basically train it. So if you're getting emails in your inbox that should go to what's called the same later box, um, so then you're basically saying, I have these emails and everything else. Is um, there a Dave filter on that? Um, well, well, yes, but in a good way. I mean, I see your emails immediately. I it see measures John. the length of the email and it, it rates it on a rant factor. There's a rantometer for sure. Um, <laughs> And Dave, actually, the other day it was kind of scary. We were we were playing soccer outside, and I heard this whistling come from coming upstairs from the computer, and it was it was a rant email. It was giving me an alert. Guys, um, uh, just just a, a progress check here. I'm okay to keep going on all this, but we are at an hour. Do you want to? There's a lot of questions. Do you want to just try to ping through some questions? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I will be back in one minute. Are you gonna poop? Yes, I have to go. No, no, you, I need. To, you, I need. Are you tracking this? I need to grab my mail before it rains because our mailbox gets like all rained in. So. Oh, right. Wow, that's okay. So there's a don't. There's a do not do on productivity. Like, go check your mail so that rain doesn't destroy. What the fuck is that? Like, okay, well, whatever. Um. All right. So Brad asks, how important is outlining or doing beats to your productivity? Um. I mentioned Essential that earlier. With it, yeah, it really is. It's it's time well spent on Fat Vampire. I'm learning even without Sean. Yeah. If if I if I didn't if I didn't beat out projects, I w I would spend twice as long writing them. And and you do spend. I mean, it it's taken me a lot. And and like in between writing too. Like I I have to massage the beats. Insert joke here. Um, between each writing session because I find that I'm ahead or I'm behind and it, it's more than usual. Uh, so it's a lot of time, but it's still so much worth it. It's, it's yeah. It keeps me on track. And I mean, this could be as simple as one sentence, one sentence, one sentence. I mean, even, even the most basic, basic beats will help you go faster. Um, the, okay, so let's see another one here. Um, What's funny is that the serious questions say serious question in parentheses, <laughs> um, because apparently we're you know there's just so much. But we cannot be trusted. Oh my god! Right. Um, all right. So I'm still looking here. There's the rescue time one. 
okay. Um, oh, maybe there aren't many questions. I thought I saw a bunch. Well, then in Amanda here. could tell us what. Oh, she here we go. Like. The, oh, what? She had the, the, the comment. She's like, I'm oh. listening to it for the first time. You know, that one. I found another one with serious question in parentheses. Have you guys ever done a personality test or something that helped you to figure out how to be productive? I, I haven't, but it is a know thyself sort of a thing. Yeah, I totally, totally yeah. have. Um, yeah, I can, I can, I can answer that. Um, the, I mean, there's the Myers Briggs. There's, there's all those different um, tests. The one that I like the best is it's really, really old. Actually, it's a few thousand years old. It's called the Enneagram, and um, it's a number-based system, one through nine. And um, uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. And um, everyone who I know who has who has taken the test is like it it pretty much nails you. I mean, there's like an a, an exhaustive number of questions, but it's really cool. One of the Lori actually, um, who I used to work with, is really really big in the Enneagram. And when people work with her, she has them take this test because um, once they have a number, she kind of knows how to work with them. And because um, everybody's a little bit different. And I'm a seven, which basically a seven is someone who um, swings from tree to tree. They're easily distracted. <laughs> they're um, <laughs> they like music. That's how his wife gets him to dinner. She like waves a cookie. <laughs> she totally does. Hey um, Sean, hey hey hey. Somebody yeah, say look cookie. Over here. It, 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 yeah, we did say cookie. Um, so it'll get um, wet. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love. Uh, I I really like the Enneagram. I think it's really cool. But it doesn't matter. I think that is something you can do: is take a personality test to know who you are. Not you know, and, and it, it's a little like a horoscope. Like take for take what you can from it and know what's true and what's not, and and build your systems around that. But you really absolutely do have to know yourself and be honest with yourself. Don't delude yourself. Um, you know, if if you know that you know you're going to mess around on Twitter at a certain time of day like know that and and don't say well today I'm not going to mess around on Twitter just block in the messing around on Twitter time into your day so that you don't hate that's yourself that's what the end of the my day. elimination of the second block is, is trying to do it's it's sort of it's part of it's a quality of life issue and part of it is i mean i can take so i i, I can generate 6000 words in, and I've, I've done this because I track, like I, I keep, I record, I'm like, how many words did I do today in three hours? I figure out my per hour. So I know that on average, some days it'll be more, some days it'll be less, I can do 6,000 words in three and a half hours. So, but that's, I've added a half hour to that morning block, which compared to three hours, like I don't even notice that. It's like, right. who cares? I'm there for three hours, what's three and a half? And I get to eliminate my entire PM block and still only lose 20% of my words productivity and then I have the whole afternoon to do other stuff and as far as like details like people talk about the podcast and stuff um, not that everybody has a podcast but if you can outsource stuff and do like your sweet spot as much as possible um, that, that what I here's the effort that I put into the podcast I, I had to get it set up but once it's set up we sit down we I open the Google Hangout I, I hit record we talk and then when I'm done, I pull the little card out of my computer, a little SD card out of, the, out of my recorder. I put it in, I like run it through a program, and I put it in Dropbox. That's it. And then my assistant, Natalie, does all the rest. So the time that goes into a one-hour SPP episode is maybe one hour and five minutes. And if you do that sort of thing, you can get super efficient, especially if you're not dicking around with email. Like, Dave, you said Pomodoro worked for you. Yes, it, it does, and, it, and that's helped me, uh, that little timer there. Did we all talk about what that what that works with Pomodoro? Uh, the is. Pomodoro timer, uh, basically, uh, the one I have anyway. You 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 click uh, the little icon and it starts, and you can set it for how long you want to go before you'll stop yourself. So I set it at either twenty or forty minutes, depending uh, on how much I really feel like writing at the moment. Um, how into it I will be. Uh, if if I'm less into it, I'll set it for twenty. Then I know okay, I can. You know, do something else. I could check my mail or whatever, and then I'll get back into it. But the break is also time, so the break is like five minutes as well. That's how I use it anyway. Uh, typically, though, I do 40 minutes at a time. Then I get up and do something, and then come back uh, 
after a five minute break, and it's worked the really key well. The idea is you work really, you will focus on one thing. Yeah, and, and it does it, it does help me because I need sort of that external thing saying, no, you have to do this right now, uh, because I can't trust myself not to get ADD and just go off, and all of a sudden, you know, I'll do research for a story. That's one thing that really led down a ro- rabbit hole is like I do a lot of research for our you stories. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do research, and then suddenly I'm like 15 websites removed from the one I started on, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome, this is awesome, and I'm just like, all of a sudden, like an hour and a half has gone by, and that really screwed me up a lot in the past, so now I push that off, and I make a note to myself, i got to research this, and then I make separate time for that. Um, so, it reminded yeah. me of another carrot and stick thing, t- or another personality thing, too, is you mentioned... Um, you have to, you know, like you know, you have to get something done. I, I, and I, Sean too. I'm pretty sure. Like we're we're carrot driven. Derek, Dave, are you driven by a carrot? <laughs> I'm driven by a cookie, a giant yeah, cookie. cookie and a stick. <laughs> so the carrot and the stick. I is actually for 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 a uh, uh, what do you call it? A column I did on on myself trying to lose weight. I drew myself running with a cookie hanging from a stick <laughs> over my head. <laughs> that should that. be our new uh, avatar on the show. <laughs> the um, if you're if you're carrot driven, then you want to look for incentives. So um, and ironically, I think Sean and I both consider a, meeting a deadline, which sounds like a, a stick thing, to be the cookie. Like that is wow, I get to yeah. meet a deadline. Yeah, but, no, I'm I'm like I go to if I if I hit all the deadlines, I really do go to bed happy. I feel like okay, that's great. Like I. So, so a quick example is at maybe um uh, a deadline where Sean is going to beat Dave, as if that was possible, <laughs> could um could be an effective, like maybe that would be a good way to motivate Dave, but for me, as a quick example, um, before the podcast, I got back from the gym and I'm, I'm all gross and sweaty and I have ex- literally an hour and a half before the show starts and, and I'm disgusting and I need a shower, but I wanted to get in an hour and a half of writing. I, I just needed to do it. So I there's a little thing in Scrivener where you can watch your word counts and I, I made a deal with myself. I said... <laughs> The hour and a half block is supposed to be 2,500 words. If I can hit 2,500 words, then I don't care about how long it takes. I won't keep going to the full. How long did it take? It took an hour and ten. That's fantastic. Because that worked for me, I was able to watch this little thing that in Scrivener where you can reset it, and I just watch. I kept looking over there, and I use that all the time. So we're all trying to trick our brains. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. well, did, did you all talk about your personality types? Did, have you all been tested? Uh, I don't know mine. Well, we, yeah, we were talking about the Enneagram. Um, that, that's the only one I know of my personally offhand, and I'm, I'm a seven. Mine is INTJ, which is the, the scientist, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> I wonder what mine uh, is. I but no but when, when under a great deal of stress, the INTJ may become obsessed with mindless, repetitive, uh, sensit activities such as over-drinking. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hope. They have a tremendous amount of ability to accomplish great things. Uh, hold on, I'm looking for the one that I thought. Um. Wait, okay, are you looking here? here. What's Wait, that? What'd you say? Is that are you looking for comments? Is that what you're doing? No, I I have. I, if you're looking for that, Dave, I'll, I'll read. I'll read um, seven. Uh, this is in the Enneagram, the seven. Um, they're the enthusiast. <laughs> um, shocking, right? Um, wait, where is it? Uh, uh, sevens are extroverted, optimistic, versatile, and spontaneous. Playful, high-spirited, and impractical, they can also misapply their many talents, becoming overextended, scattered, and undisciplined. They constantly seek new and exciting experiences, but can become distracted and exhausted by staying on the go. They typically have problems with impatience and impulsiveness. At their best, they focus their talents on worthwhile goals, becoming appreciative, joyous, and satisfied. Um, but but the, the the downside of the enthusiast is um, they're prone to like um, like manic rage and drug use on the lower end. So um, gotta be careful. <laughs> As an INTJ, your primary mode of living is focused internally, where you take things in primarily via your intuition. Your second, secondary mode is external, where you deal with things rationally and logically. Uh, INTJs live in a world of ideas and strategic planning. They value intelligence, knowledge, and competence, and typically have high standards in these regards, which they continuously strive to fulfill. 
Uh, to a somewhat lesser extent, they have similar expectations of others. That's very true. Uh, very introverted. Uh, they they hate messes and disorganization, which that part is ironic because Wait, what? I'm disorganized. <laughs> yeah, yes, and I hate it. <laughs> oh, but you're just like doesn't mean it, right? that you don't do it. Yeah, yeah right. I that. So. Do you, anyway. um, I have no idea what mine is. This should be the better off undead, where we all just take the test. And oh, maybe I would we, love that actually. But how could you possibly do that in real time and and not? Because you'd have to be reading everything. No, we'd have to do it for like next week or something. The, the point is, though, and I think this is true for everything, and it, it resonates throughout everything that we said today, was the you really do need to know yourself. So the example that Sean gave about um, about if you check Twitter in the afternoon, don't necessarily try to shoehorn yourself and say, I'm not going to do that. You just have to know that, that, um, that that's what you do and you work around it. So an example I think I've given before is I mentioned that I have a three hour block in the morning and then an hour and a half block in the afternoon. And um, Fridays, now I did write Fat Vampire today, I just gave this example because I wanted to catch up and I feel like I'm behind. But normally I don't have that hour and a half block in the afternoon on Fridays. I just have the three hour block. And instead I do double on Tuesdays. And the reason is because Fridays it's the end of the week. I don't work on the weekends. The podcast is just like I just get kind of drained. It's fun, but I'm drained. And so I know myself that I don't do well after the podcast. So I rearranged my schedule specifically because of that. And every little adjustment that I've made with writing blocks, writing times, number of multiple, like I used to write several projects at once. Now I don't do that. Those are all things that I experimentally determined this works better or this doesn't. And I'm always tweaking and always looking for a better way to do it. But it all comes down to knowing yourself. Yeah, I think the best analogy for all of this productivity stuff is is weight loss. Um, or, <laughs> or... <laughs> wow, that was an actual bark. Um, I, I think that it's it's all that stuff. It's consistency. It's knowing yourself. Saying that uh, I'm not going to. I'm not ever going to cheat. I'm gonna. I'm going to not eat anything bad for 30 days. If you're used to eating bad stuff all the time, that's not a realistic statement. It's not a realistic goal, and all you're going to do is fail, feel bad about the failure, and probably binge eat. So the best thing you can do is say, you know what, I'm going to be... you trying to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing you can do is say, okay, what I need to do is just get through Monday through Friday, and then I'm going to pull back a little bit, and I'm just going to have a ding-dong or whatever because... <laughs> <laughs> He's not even talking about something you eat. Well, I guess in a way. <laughs> Might be true. Yeah. Now, see, I could go off for a while on that. I won't. I will try not to. But what you're talking about in terms of, you know, you're good through the week and then, like, actually having some sort of a binge doesn't work for me. Um, and I've discovered that for me, if because I do follow a pretty regimented plan, it actually works better to have small treats to, like, let off the pressure. So you don't hulk out and be like, oh, you know, must destroy a buffet. <laughs> but that's that's all. It's all no uh, thyself. It's all personal that. awareness. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that really is the key. Knowing yourself and, and being able to adjust, um, you know, when, when you need to. Um, well, what, I, I always say, you know, if, if you're going to pick up prostitutes and murder them, uh, it, it, it's hard <laughs> not to, so just kill like one every week or so, rather than really, because otherwise you should go on a murder spree. Wait, you always <laughs> say this? <laughs> no, I was just that, that's what Johnny sounded like though. He sounded like he was talking about something other than writing. So. <laughs> no, I was talking like about I was, I was I was talking about food like, or masturbation. Was about, was, was food. Uh, I thought that was clear because it was following up on Sean's. Ding dong thing. Oh, it was that's clear to me, was. but no, because <laughs> Dave likes to bring dead hookers into most conversations, <laughs> as he always says. Dave, just I'm sorry, I understand the problem here. Dave, for a lot of people, just <laughs> I didn't realize this. Food and sex, they're different. Like they're distinct oh! for a lot of people. <laughs> if you guys did you guys ever see that Seinfeld where George decides that there's nothing yeah, better than food and sex, him. so he keeps the sandwich? <laughs> And she's like, he's That's under the scary. covers and he comes up for air and bites the sandwich and goes back under. So do you guys want to be done? Because we're like an hour and uh, 20. I, right I think now. we ended like 15 minutes ago. But uh, I, think yeah. that was, I think that was important though because there were a lot of people were curious about this. And if you have more questions, then, then, then call them in and let us know. 
Carl asked if uh, Better Off Undead's going to be funny because he doesn't know if he should stay up because it's 2.30 where he is in the I morning. can guarantee it won't be. It won't be funny. <laughs> yeah, there's no point, Carl. You can just pretty much never get to stay up for Better Off Undead. It's possibly the worst thing you'll ever hear. It really is. It could be the worst way you could spend your time. We're but for those on that, the worst show. But for those of us, uh, those of you that want the abuse, uh, stick around and follow our Nobody tweets, and we'll post a link. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this has been the self-publishing podcast. If you do have follow-up questions on this, maybe the, I mean the comments might be a good place for that, because uh, a way everybody can see it. Because I anticipate a lot of questions on or this. Or tweet, so we'll tweet us at ZC Bulger. Tweet us at ZC Bulger. That actually showed up in the the chat stream. And. <laughs> Uh, we'll uh, we'll see you for better off undead next and for this next week. 